Well, good evening. It's a beautiful evening out here. Other than the wind, it's oh, it's always windy here, but today seems exceptionally windy. I'm just heading over to the camper trailer to get uh, some hot sauce. We're gonna have chicken wings tonight for supper. They come from our own chickens, which is pretty pretty excited about that. Anyways, it got me thinking when uh, when you're planning what you're gonna grow on your farm or your homestead, how do you, how would you ever decide? There's just like a long list of animals that you could really have and it's, it's almost impossible to choose between one or the other. I mean, chickens is kind of a given, right? Everybody's gotta have chickens, but then there's ducks and geese and llamas and sheep and ponies and mules and miniature donkeys and llamas, you name it. Actually not llamas. Well, llamas or goats. I gotta ask this today, why, why do we not like llamas? Well. I, really, I love all God's creatures, but I'm pretty sure llamas are the work of the devil and goats are a close second to that right, one. Right, just finished supper. We had, uh, actually we had chicken wings from chickens we raised right here on this farm. So that's, uh, it's pretty in tune with exactly what I'm talking about. So chickens, I mean, chickens are like literally the gateway drug of homesteading or small farms or whatever. Like it's, that's what gets you in and then they, and then they hook you, right? So um, if you're thinking like, well, what, 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 what do I want to get into? What kind of cool animals can I get for my homestead? I mean, there's two paths you can take. And I mean, are you looking to, I guess, from a sustainability model to be able to feed your family and then have surplus and maybe, you know, within your community, be able to, to supply some folks with some food? Or are you looking to, you know, just have that out there left field, like crazy stuff like emus and so what do you want to achieve? And if it's from the sustainability model, that's what I want to talk about today. Because if it's from the exotic side of stuff, I don't have any expertise in that at all. Um, so <laughs> maybe stop watching the video if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for the sustainability model, and that's what I want to talk about today, uh, where you're feeding your family and maybe having some surplus to, uh, to sell within your community. This is super easy. Just go to your local grocery store because I mean, nobody knows better in your local grocery store what people are buying. Uh, you just go in, inside the door, take a left, go counterclockwise around the whole store. You'll have your bakery, you'll have your, your deli, you're gonna have uh, your dairy section, you're gonna have your produce section. These are all things that you can grow and, and manage on your small farm, your homestead, right? Super easy to do. And honestly, as you go around the store, I think you'll be absolutely amazed amazed at what you can get at the grocery store that you could also just grow or make at home. Like you get into the frozen food section, talk about raising your own pork, your own beef or your own chickens. Uh, there's no reason why, you know, you can't make your own, your own burgers, your own pizzas, your own, your own ice cream and cheese and all that stuff has to come from somewhere, right? It's all agricultural based. I don't know about you, but I would prefer my food to come from a farm and not a factory. How are you? Oh, you're a good boy, aren't you? All right, so I gotta get my backside over here and try and get this horse shelter put back together and get it flipped on its roof here tonight, hopefully. On its skids, I mean, not on its roof. It's already on its roof. Well, now to see if the yellow tractor starts. I believe in you, old girl. See, I can't fix a tractor. I can only give it confidence. Needless to say, this was an epic fail. All right, so I got the tractor hooked up. I got it perched. I think it's in a position where I can pretty much just give it a push and I think it'll come down. Never mind, actually, I just give it a, a good solid push with two hands from the back. Got her flipped over. So I just got to bar this, uh, bar this skid underneath. So it's not perfect, but I'm happy that it's upside right. There's really pretty minimal damage just to the skids. Everything else, like you know, and I got the center beam that I can reattach up to up to the top right here, and then down below where you can see where that post attaches. All right, so yeah, so it's nine o'clock at night. The yellow tractor is back where it belongs. 
I'm gonna go close up some gates, get the side by side pulled out of there, put the tools away, and then it's time for a cup of tea. So I'm gonna let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.